What's up? This is Revenge of the Jocks, and I'm your host, Marty. And right now, I am sitting down with Jordan Harbinger. Yeah, nailed it. I like the cough in the middle of my <clears throat> I know. I have to add that in. There's a reason why I'm coughing. <laughs> How you doing? Good, man. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. This is fun. Uh, yeah, it's a good time. We're just getting started. The yeah. party's just always going here. That's right. I don't I don't think parties should end. I agree. Got my hand, I got like a X and like my birthday on it, and it represents the day I turned twenty one. But I didn't when I turned twenty one, you know, everyone made this big deal about partying and mm-hmm. shit. But I realized that when I was born was when my party started. Nice. Well, I can tell that you're still enjoying the childhood partying because if you look around, for those of you who can't see us, there are toys everywhere. Yes, this is. I have art. I would like, I'm just sorry. Moving. Art everywhere. There's stuff yeah, and toys. toys everywhere. Yeah, toys, art, bean bags, and all kinds of colorful things. I like colorful stuff. Yeah, life yeah. size Deadpool behind you. Are you into film movies? Sometimes, yeah. Not as much as you, obviously, with that big Deadpool though. Yeah, I love movies. It's like my favorite form of entertainment. I just like going to the places they could take you and the adventure they take you on. Did good you, movies. Did you always have like a really active imagination growing up then? Yeah, as a kid, I was always making things, creating things, telling stories. Mm-hmm. Like I was always been on a great adventure. You were kidnapped. Yeah. Twice. Yeah, when I was younger. Yeah. Not not as a kid, but when I was twenty, and then when I was twenty four. What was going on? I lived in Mexico City, and I was twenty years old, and I lived in like this really crappy neighborhood on the outside of town, and I got into a taxi. And it turned out that the guy was like a fake taxi, and he mm-hmm. just kept driving me out of town, out of town, out of town, even further and further away. And then I was like, hey, man, you got to let me out of here. And then I realized I couldn't open the door. I couldn't unlock the door because the lock was cut, and it was below the door. And I was like, let me out, let me out. He's like, no, no, relax, relax. And I was like, oh, man, I'm getting kidnapped right now. But when, eventually he stopped, and I, I ended up reaching around the back seat. And choking him out from the back. Crawl between the seats in the car, push him out, of, open the door, push him out of the car, get out of the car, try to drive the car, couldn't drive a stick shift. So I, I kick him out of the car, I get out of the car, and I'm like, I can't drive this car. So I take the keys out, throw the keys away so he doesn't just chase me in the car when he wakes up. And I just ran. If he wakes up. If he wakes up, yeah. if he's not dead. Ran as far as I could back the way we came, and eventually somebody else stopped the car and picked me up because I was like trying to wave down traffic, and eventually somebody stopped. If you think about us as, like, the part of our minds that use maps or get around, like, they're not as strong as they used no, to be. No, it's totally Like, broken. we'll get in an Uber and just look dead at our phone the whole time and not really pay attention if they're going anywhere if we don't check the app. That right? is Like, we don't sure. know what streets are around us, where we're supposed to go. You're just in this car, and it's just like, don't know what this fucker is doing. Yeah. You know what well, I'm saying? Are you worried about getting kidnapped? Because you're, what are you, 6'8", 6'7"? 6'7"? Yeah. yeah, I don't think anybody's going to kidnap you. I got kidnapped once. Did you really? Yeah. By... Uh, these guys in a white van. I was like nine years old, and I was really? out, and my brother was in the hospital, so my parents were spending a lot of time at the hospital with my brother. And I was like in the like I go out all the times of night because I didn't have no parents at the house at the sure. time. That'd be going and fall asleep, whatever. But but I go to work from there. Then I used to just get myself ready for school. When I'm out, and you know my dad comes back, I'm not there, and I and I was walking down the street, and I got picked up in a van, but. You know, probably you know, I was a tiny kid, but I wasn't a big kid either. But so, anyway, you know, fighting and scratching, and ended up jumping out the car while I was going and really? rolling. Yeah, and then wow. I ran all the way home, past the Krogers, and back to the house. And I told my dad, "Hey, I got kidnapped." Did he believe you? Yeah, why wouldn't he believe me? Because so, he, so he grabbed his gun and he went out looking for what I said. Wow. But then I was lying. That didn't really have all happen. Oh, this is all BS. This is all BS. This oh, is, that's man. the exact story I told my parents, though. Then I got my ass whooped because I was out all night, and I, they came home, and I didn't know that they were coming home. So I made up that story. Your parents are in the hospital because your brother is not is de- not doing well. And in that moment, you decide to tell them that you got kidnapped to add all that it was a couple stress. Of months, it was a couple of months into it. I was just acting out. They was going back yeah. and forth for so long. It was like they just forgot about me. You know, so you made up a kidnap story. Yeah, Dang. just to get their attention. What happened so the second time you got kidnapped? That was in Serbia. So it was part of the former Yugoslavia. So I worked there as an English teacher and the their version of like the FBI basically they thought that I was a spy and they took me and my friend in for basically questioning in like a a the basement of a house. I love to read. Yeah? Yeah. Just, how how often do you read and what do you like to read? I usually try to read one book every two weeks. That's how do you pick read. the book how do you pick the books that you want to read though? I'll judge them by the cover. You judge a book by its cover? <laughs> 
There's something about not doing that that I heard sometime. Yeah, it? I judge them all by the cover. Yeah. Yeah. I see you got my friend's book, The Four Hour Work Week, up there. I see the cover. Tim, what's the name? Tim um, Ferriss. Yeah, Tim Ferriss. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. up there next to your Hobbit. Do you believe in the Four Hour Work Week? Well, he doesn't even do the Four Hour Work Week. It's just the title of the book. That guy works hard. Nobody works a Four Hour Work Week with a real job. Nobody building anything real. So how can he sell that week. book? He, you got to have a cashy title. So, man, your show is way more popular than my show, man. So far. And I think that is really fucking cool. Like, so, like. Oh, you do good. I thought you were going to get angry about it. No, nah, I don't get angry. I like to see everyone do well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit. That's good. I really believe in cross pollination. It's a you good mindset. Yeah, I want to see everybody eat. Are there any girls that fell in love with your voice that send, like, weird messages to your there, inbox? There are, yeah. There are was there one... podcast groupies? <laughs> not as many as not as many as one might hope, but I did have one that wrote in and said that she tells all her friends that I'm engaged to her, that we're engaged, and I was like, "Block." I like to have conversations with people I didn't get to have conversations yeah. with in the locker room. Yeah, well, I like, would ne- probably if I was in the locker room. There's, so, I'm either folding towels. <laughs> or I'm lost. The towel boys, equipment people be cool as shit, though. Yeah? Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. probably a decent job if you like hanging out with, because it's the only time you're going to get to hang out with the players if you're like 17. In professional sports, like how, you guys are on the same team, but I feel like everybody's probably really competitive even still, because y'all were competing hard in high school, college. Yeah, what are you talking about? Like, competing like as far as with each other on the team? Yeah, yeah. You have to compete because that man could take your job. That's right. Yeah. Like, there's no, I don't think there are any other, like, real true job areas that are, where the turnover is as quick and as competitive as it is in the athletic world, especially the NFL. And everybody's always like, oh, it doesn't matter if you play, you still make, I don't know, what's the bottom, like $400,000 a year or something like yeah. that? Plus, your career is shorter than most, like, if, if you're a That's lawyer, you could work for 40 years. So, if you're making $400,000 for 40 years... It's totally different from making $400,000 for three years. Yeah. I learned that money is like one of those weird things that if you have a lot, you don't want to talk about it. If you have a little, you don't want to talk about it. Yeah. I like, know more about my friends' sex lives than I do about their money. What was the first thing you bought that wasn't a good investment? That's a good question. I did I did take my check to the, a check a uh, full check to the bank and cash and came home with a briefcase and threw it in the air and laid in it. It's did like, you really? Yeah. And I then did took that. a picture for Instagram and then There was no Instagram quick. then though. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. <laughs> I didn't even take a picture. As now that I think about it, because no one was there with me. I just turned the fan on and I threw it in the fan so it would fly around the room. <laughs> and then I put it back and took it back to the bank. You're like, I can't I can't hold on to this. I feel yeah. I feel scared right now. I handcuffed it to my wrist and everything did just you? for the experience. How much was in the briefcase? Uh, a couple hundred thousand. But I've never really been a guy to like just I buy I I'm a gadget guy, so mm-hmm. like I buy like computers and shit like that, but like I don't really buy like stuff stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. good. That's good cuz I feel like the the stereotype of an athlete is they get a bunch of money and they do the dumbest things possible. Like Mike Tyson, you see like why do you have a tiger? What are you doing? Why not have a tiger, he's, though? But he's broke now. Would you rather have a tiger? I don't think he's ra- broke because of the tiger. No, he's broke for other reasons. <laughs> he for- got robbed that's, by Don King. That's true. I think the thing about the athletes, though, you got to realize is that every most majority of athletes are first-generation money. Yes, exactly. Yeah, good, so good we, point. So we've never been taught about money. We right. don't come from money, so we don't know things about money. People around us don't know things about money. So you either lean on trusting somebody mm-hmm. and get robbed like Mike Tyson and plenty of other guys. Or you try to learn it yourself and you make all the mistakes that any 21, 20 year old kid would make. And then you got that that kid in you who wants to do for those around him that doesn't have what he has. And by the time you make those mistakes, the average career is only three and a half years. So you think about 21, 22, 23, 24, you out of the league. Mid and Plano being out of the league, but that you can't recover from those mistakes. I was interviewing Shaq a while ago, Shaquille O'Neal, and I, I asked Shaq. I asked him how he made decisions because you don't know who to trust. When you are that famous, when you're an NFL player, when you're an NBA player, you don't know who to trust. Everybody's your friend, right? Yeah. So he has this thing called the panel, which is his mom. I'm going to get this wrong, but I think it's his mom, his uncle, one of his original coaches, his lawyer, his manager, and I think one of his accountants. It's like and a board of directors. It's a board of directors. And so whenever he has an important decision like – this company wants to sponsor, wants me to be in their commercials, or like this company wants me to invest in them, or they want me to take equity and then I'm going to be a spokesperson. Whatever it is, he runs it by the whole panel, and it's all these p- people that he trusts at yeah. one time. Now that's a really yeah. great way to go about it. The thing is finding five people that could you could trust to have your best interests. Yeah, that's tough. It's hard to find one person. Yeah, that has your best interests. When I was 31, I don't know how much I put it. I'm 38 now. I don't know how much thought I put into a lot of those decisions. Yeah, I, I think I have to, though, because 
a lot of stuff I do, I invest my own money. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so it's like, no, I don't have invest. It's easier to go out there and make bad decisions with someone else's money. You're like, oh, shit. You know, I understand. Like, yeah. my mistakes, you know, you know, they impact my family's outcome as well. Not only the company's outcome, but the family's outcome, too, because that's money that I could have been using to feed my family later on down the line and down the line. So it's yeah, like, that's right. So it's like when you start making these big business decisions, it's like, all right, so this is what – this is what we're thinking, you know, this percentage, this or that. And then sometimes there's just some language I just don't understand. 